I suppose if you put me in a corner, it would have to be the Jalera 4. When I was 10, my mum bought me a dance set record player. Look it up on Google, what a record player is. And I went down to that second hand shop that was opposite the horse and jockey pub in Warrington. And I got a copy of the 1957 TT, the Stanley Schofield recording. And then when my mum thought I was in bed and I was asleep, I used to put the dance set on underneath the bedclothes and I'd play this recording of the 57 Gilera. It's going down there and wow, wow, wow. And Bob McIntyre and Jeff Duke and oh goodness me. It was a religious experience. They were absolute moto gods for me. And for better or for worse, I was a junkie. And thanks to Sammy Miller and his fantastic museum, I actually got to ride a 1957 Gilera 4, the last year of production. Incredible bike. And the thing that surprised you most was how small it is compared with a Manx Norton or a Matchless G50. The Gilera is a tiny, tiny thing. Oh, and rev like crazy. You know, that bike would outcelerate any British bike, leave him for dead. And there I was, and I brought it back to Sammy, and there wasn't a scratch on it. And John Ring, his mechanic, took the bike off me. John was relieved, I was relieved, Sammy was relieved. It's a 250,000 pound bike. Don't drop it, or you're going to have a big mortgage. And I shut my eyes and I thought, Frank Melling, the 1957 TT, me riding GPs on public roads. And then I won at Monza and I stood on the top step and you know what clubman riders are. They're all the same. <laughs> Fantasists. Yeah, they're all dream bikes. One of my favorites is the Mike Halewood Ducati. The, uh, they made a replica of the bike he won the CT on. And it came at a, an odd part of my life. I just got my first job as a manager and my managing director called me in and said it was about time that I uh, grew up and acted sensibly and forgot bikes. Anyhow, I couldn't go to the TT and, and I was sat out there, I was near suicidal. And I found this XREF guy who was nine tenths barking mad and he agreed to fly me to the Isle of Man in this little plane cash only, nudge, nudge, wink, no questions asked. And I watched Hale would win the 1978 TT from Glen Helen. And I watched him as the fairing touched down. And at the end of the race, there were more blokes crying there than you would see at a thousand funerals. Absolutely magic. By an incredible series of quirks of fate, I ended up as BSA's last works rider. I was genuinely the last person to be supported by BSA with a full works bike. Uh, and it was a funny experience, you know, there I was, a, a decent club rider, and I was walking in the footsteps of the great BSA riders of the past. And I felt very awed by the whole experience. And the bike I, was given, I ended up owning, and I've got mixed feelings about it. I love riding it, but it also ruined my dreams. You know, Club and Fantasy is a game. Well, that bike was a full factory BSA, and I still couldn't win anything worth talking about on it. And it showed forever that I was never going to hack it as a professional rider. Oh yeah, I love retros. I really do. I know all of the correct and sensible and grown up reasons. Hey, there you go. I've said grown up. The grown up reasons that modern bikes need ABS and they need traction control and heated grips and fairings and iPod docks and water coolers in the panniers. I don't know. But they remind me a bit of making love wearing 20 condoms. You sort of know that what you're doing is supposed to be interesting, but you're so far away from the experience, you know, you may as well not bother. I mean, for me, I'd rather a cup of milky coffee and two chocolate biscuits. But retros are very different. Um, retros are a lot purer form of motorcycling. They're motorcycling distilled, and they're more back to, the, to, to what makes motorcycling magic. I mean, the Triumph sweet, uh, Street Twin, that's a nice, nice motorcycle. 
if that had been made in classic times uh, uh, to the same levels of, of quality as the street twin is, would have been considered one of the great classics of all time. I like the Moto Guzzi V7 II as well. And you know, I had one of my best ever race rides on that bike. That was coming back from the photo shoot at Mandala Delario near the Gutsy factory. I'd been up in the mountains with Carol, who was uh, my photographer, uh, and we be shooting the bike and everything was cool. Really, really good. Then the PR guy gets a text. Hello, it's from his girlfriend. So instead of having a nice gentle ride back to the factory, girlfriend wants him back in their apartment for what I know not, rapidly. So he sets off at 100 miles an hour around the banks of Lake Varese, and I don't know where the Gutsy factory is exactly. And so I've got to follow him and chase him down. So there we are, coming along, 100 miles an hour, two up with a ton of photographic gear on, and we did get back to the factory before they closed. He said cheerio and went to wherever he went to, to do whatever he wanted to do. You know, when I used to read magazines at school, my teachers would say, you're wasting your time, do something useful. Uh, and then I think, gosh, I have wasted my time, but what a way to not do something useful. And how much fun can you have not doing something useful? So I have a tremendous fun making this book. Every single story has been uh, a joy. And I hope you enjoy reading it as much as I've enjoyed making it.